You know, it's funny because, um, I'm going to sound almost, but, um, they were looking for a man to be on the panel. And I'm almost glad, I'm almost glad that it didn't happen because it sort of feels, I don't know, it's great. I don't, I can't remember the last time I've been at an event when it's just girls talking and that's great and they're all at the top of their game and it's massively inspiring. I feel hugely honoured to be a part of um, a gang here tonight. It sort of feels, um, I don't know, it's good, I think, in terms of what you could be doing on a Monday night. I know Game of Thrones is on at nine o'clock and I do have my eye <laughs> and we will finish at eight, so I am aware of that. But I think it's really important um, and I think I'm really pleased that everybody's here tonight because it feels like this fits in with uh, Tom Knox and his agenda for the IPA. And I think these are big, serious issues um, that we are, all have a responsibility to doing something about. Um, I was going to do a little bit of a me asking questions to the girls, but I'm not, um, because we are going to finish at 8 o'clock so people can go home and watch Game of Thrones. So what I'll do is I'll get girls, women, anyway, the fabulous ladies back on stage. Um, and I'm going to open it up to the floor. If there aren't any questions, then I will start. But I sort of feel that you may well have heard enough from me. And actually, I'm sure that you guys have got... Um, questions um, and things that we should be talking about. Um, so there is a microphone, two, one, two. This is great. Um, and if you do have um, a thought, could you just do the name and where you're from? Um, and we'll <coughs> start and we will be finished at eight. Any questions? Hooray. I always feel like I should bring chocolate for the first person. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rosie Strachan. I'm a planner at MNC Saatchi. And um, oh, it's so inspiring, obviously. Um, what I struggle with sometimes in marketing to women is that, sadly, so many women read the Daily Mail, follow Kim Kardashian online, and as much as I absolutely buy what you're selling in terms of the, the feminist agenda, um, I guess s many of the products that we're looking to sell are bought by people who maybe are not, for whatever reason, feeling as emancipated as we may feel in this room. So I'm just interested in your thoughts around that kind of tension there between the market and maybe the feminist agenda. Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do understand what you're saying. The only thing I would say is the statistic that most women and I'm saying 92%, but I'm not sure it is that, but that's, uh, you know, I'm a creative. Let me give you some last. It's an extraordinary number of women who say, I don't recognise myself in advertisements. So even if they read the Daily Mail, um, or they're more traditional in their values, I still think they don't want to be treated like a stereotype. They are more complex and more interesting um, and more value, valuable than that would be my, from the creative point of view. I, th I think you can change attitudes with a great piece of creative. And I think um, uh, the example I always often use is the Paralympics work that Channel 4 did. Uh, and you think, you know, just in 60 seconds, it, it transformed our view of disability. And, and we liked the view of ourselves as having an emancipated view of disability, didn't we? And everybody sort of grew into that role. And we thought, oh, yeah, this is who we are. We're this great, you know, understanding, liberated uh, nation. And we lived up to the ideal of it. So, and I think it was the same with this, this girl can. I think it was um, exactly the same thing, which is, you know, on one hand, they're watching Kim Kardashian. On the other hand, they're absolutely appreciating and enjoying the, you know, images in that ad. So I think both is fine. I think that's the thing, it's both. I think you can have both and actually just giving them something else. You don't have to kill one yeah. thing. No. But keep something else alive so there's choice. And I think someone said it earlier, which is women are kind of complex and flawed and it's actually nice to see them in multiple roles. You don't have to kill the beauty. Beauty is the right thing to appeal to at some points, but mm. it'd be nice to have more, more options. Men, men are funny and stupid and... Gorgeous, all, all those different things, but it'd be nice that women were portrayed in multiple ways. And men too. Yeah, I think this agree. is not just about women, this mm. is about how, you know, just avoiding the stereotype generally is a good thing. I think the other thing is tone. So, you know, it depends on your definition of feminist, right? So if your definition of feminism is, I will campaign against something, I will stand up and have a point of view which is opposed to something. I will get my placard and burn my bar and all those things. And um, I think how you talk to women 
um, and the tone you take. And again, if I can just reference this, go can. There's pure joy in that film, but it packs a punch in terms of message, right? It doesn't say, I am against this. It doesn't say, you're wrong, I'm right. The tonality is just so positive, and, and yet it lands a really powerful message. So, um, you know, whether you read the Daily Mail or not, I would challenge a woman to think that is, um, you know, pushing an agenda to a place that is not appropriate for women. So I think, you know, when you think about creativity in that way, um, tone is is a lot of it. And again, I, you know, I would really encourage you guys, if your clients have a view of their target consumer that is reduced to they are a Daily Mail reader, it's like, I'm a Daily Mail reader, I'm a marketer, I read the Daily Mail. Every day, because the app is one of the best apps, and when you're overseas, yeah. I'm like, but I also read The Economist and everything else. So it's not, it's just not as simple as that. Women aren't as simple as that, and, you know, we can talk to them in different ways, I think. Hi, um, I'm Rebecca. I'm a senior creative uh, at DRUM, OMG. And, um, yeah, my question is, I been working eight years in this industry and I've never had a female creative director. I've had some female colleagues, etc., but never had that role model really. And um, it's a very male environment, whether it's clients or sort of people in, in leadership, etc. And my question to you is, in terms of your experience, how did you build that voice so that you can be heard in our environment? Um, <laughs> Sorry, that's a yeah, pretty big no, question. I think it is a really great question. I mean, I'm lucky in that I had some great bosses that promoted. I was at AMV Group before at Proximity. I was saying to a man, Peter Souter was the ECD at AMV, very, very strong, you know, kind of supporter of women, as is Farah and Scylla. And so I, you know, um, was lucky in that. But. The thing I would say about um, having a voice is don't pretend that you're not a woman. Don't pretend you're not a mother. I mean, you know, I, and that, I remember when I um, came back from my third child, I had a new PA, and she said, what, what should I say when you're at school concerts? And I'm like, you say I'm at school mm -hmm. concerts. You know, and that, and that was interesting to me that she was like, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to hide that you're a mum? And I'm like, don't hide that I'm a mum. So I think it's don't be ashamed. And if... If you're in a culture that doesn't want that, get the hell out of there. Oh, it's not yeah. that they don't want that. Yeah. I think a lot of men, they don't really realise it's not really in their, in their mind. They're, they're just, you yeah. know, they're not aware that that's the issue. But also, I think lots of male creative directors now desperately want women. Lots of CEOs mm, yes. desperately want women. So this, you're not fighting against, uh, we don't want you. Actually, to be a female creative director now is fantastic because you're rare and people want you. So it's, you will find it easier to have a voice um, that people are prepared to listen to now. But yeah, my thing would be, be, be very authentic to what you are a woman, and you know, if you have children, a mother, um, and don't, don't hide that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good hand show. Hi, I'm Louise from uh, MEC. Um, this is mostly directed at Kim. Just wanted to, uh, really interested, and also actually Lindsay um, touched on diversity and trying to, to bring that in. I mean, it's one thing to talk about women, but for me, also seeing a woman of, of colour um, in advertising is, is even rarer in, in many cases. And um, at the recent um, Adweek Europe conference, a woman talked about how she owns a dog. She was, you know, she was black, and she's never seen a black person in pet, you know, pet food advertising, for example. So it's like they just don't exist. <laughs> um, how um, easy have you found trying to kind of push the case for diversity with um, clients that you've worked with? For me, it's called the bluff, <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest. Which is because I, I, it's a personal agenda of mine, not just women, but also diversity, because I am on that front line of who is on the telly, in a way. Um, and actually, I will put different ethnicities up for lead roles and challenge when, when they come back with ridiculous, and often it is ridiculous reasons that that person shouldn't have that role, I will stand by why they should. And most of the time I win, but generally people will not say, 
oh, it's because I want a white guy or I want a white girl. Um, and you have to just, for me, I just keep putting those people on the table that aren't the white guy and the white girl and just keep putting it out there and trying to change it. And, and there was, I remember a spot in particular with a, a young black boy and he was wonderful, he was amazing. And the creative director came over to me and was like, oh, well, the client's not going to go with a mixed cast. And the client loved the cast. It was the creative director's problem with the, with the issue. And actually, what I try to do is just la la fingers, no, this is who I want, and hope someone along the right line says yes, and often get my way. Um, and just keep, as I said, like, keep using my power as a director to try and change that subtly. Each job, make sure that that happens. Um, and it is. It is. So hopefully, it won't be so much of a problem in a couple of years, I hope. Uh, uh, I, I remember an ad that we shot in South Africa, and it was for a, a, a bank. Actually, I can, it was long enough time ago. It was for HSBC. <laughs> so <laughs> HSBC, Go there, girl. HSBC is all about, at the time, celebrating cultural differences. And we were shooting the ad in Cape Town, you know, the city above all others that represents cultural differences. And we managed to have a huge cast. And when it was finally edited on screen, it was spot the non-white face. It was absolutely extraordinary. Because, you know, by, because the, you know, the combination of the director and the creative team and a series of small decisions, nobody had actually bothered to think, well, hang on a minute, is this what we actually want? And I think, I think you have to be quite vocal about it. Because it's, it comes back to that invisibility thing. People just don't see it. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm an account executive at Drum, along with Rebecca. Um, so my question is actually uh, what you were saying, jumping on what you were saying, that... Um, Actually, now people don't even realize it. Well, not don't even realize, but it's getting people think that we've reached that criticism mass, that there's actually enough women. That, and I'm actually thinking that we're getting into that phase where we should start being able of engaging more males. So I'm actually glad there's, there's actually men in the room. But what about we're criticizing when there's only a, a men panel? But obviously, how can we start? opening that up with the men and how can we engage them in realizing that they're also part of that and I'm thinking about the he for she campaign for example and I wanted to know your thinking about it. Personally I think it's brilliant I think it is the only way that you know there's no point in a load of women sitting in a room talking to ourselves and you know <laughs> it's like it's slightly sad that that's what we're doing today but you know I have spoken since I wrote that article I've spoken on so many panels about I'm invited suddenly to speak about diversity as though I'm the world expert <laughs> so you, you learn more but you know in two occasions recently I'm on a panel about diversity and it's a split session so our panel is in the main room and I think at the Oxford Media Convention we we're doing a panel on diversity in TV and there was a session about Facebook that was going on in a sort of coat cupboard just down the corridor and three quarters of the people in the room got up to go to the panel about Facebook rather than the one on diversity. And unfortunately it attracts, you know, lots of women come to uh, a session on women in marketing or women as a target audience in marketing because it's a topic that's fascinating to them. The only way we'll make a difference is if we engage the whole community. And I think it's about, you know, stereotypical pejorative images of men as well. You know, we all have something to gain. So I think the more opportunities we can find to engage uh, a broader audience, the better. And I think Tom Knox's theme is absolutely superb. I'm thrilled about uh, his theme. I think, it, you know, it will make a difference. Um. Uh, uh, so some of you I know are on Twitter. Are you guys on Twitter if people wanted to connect with you? Or? Yeah. Yes. So I'll be in the bar if anyone you'll, She'll be in the bar. <laughs> um, at, at Lindsay Clay. At Lindsay Clay, I'm sure you'll find. Um, again, a huge thank you to, to four very, very busy and successful women for sharing stories today. So thank you so much. Thank you.